Hello, my name is Squirrel and I am an addict. Hi, Squirrel. I'm addicted to control and the repercussions of this addiction include but are not limited to chronic anxiety, an obsession with exercise, a fear of regaining an immense amount of weight that I previously lost, and profound insecurities that I will destroy every functional relationship in my life with negative compulsive thoughts and feelings. This podcast is about me, the day-to-day shit that I experience, the wins and the struggles. Selfishly, I release this into the public forum not for validation, but because talking helps me process my emotions. It is my sincerest wish, however, that expressing my journey in this brutally honest way can also serve to help others going through this human experience. I use my own language and humor to convey these experiences, so they will certainly include copious amounts of profanity and sarcasm, particularly since a fairly warped sense of humor is how I choose to deal with life. Therefore, please listen with an open heart and mind and understand that nothing I say is intentionally offensive. I simply wish to express myself and hope my mental meanderings connect with others. Enjoy. Yo, 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 what's up? All right, Squirrel Radio is back. I'd like to take this opportunity to have a little bit of a catch up. I hope you enjoyed my disclaimer. That is one of the things I, th- I think is, is really important. Um, look, people, I'm not going to lie. Social media, putting things online, uh, there is a certain responsibility in that um, that I didn't really think about for a while. I took down Squirrel Radio because I was a bit paranoid about some things that had happened in my work life, and uh, I was going through some transitions in that area, and I uh, thought it was best that I take it down. Look, I'm, I'm facing the very real uh, concept that the shit that I say is being judged. Um, that disclaimer is the only way I could think of to express myself in this forum, which is what helps me. And also explain to people why I do it um, in hopes that they won't adversely judge me on it. That being said, I, (laughs) and what I'm about to talk about a lot, is that I I can't control, right? As humans, we can't control how others judge us or, or what they judge us on. So I accept that I'm putting this out there uh, to be judged because it is public. But um, I need to learn how to filter. You know, I've, ta- I've spoke before about how I usually write because I can filter when I write and then when I talk, I'm not. Look, writing is difficult and I don't have time to do it. Talking is easy for me and it is the way that I process. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take responsibility for the fact that, that, that I don't, once I release it, I have no control over where it goes. But at least now I have a disclaimer that I, that's honest and uh, I hope people will, will understand. Anyway, let's have a bit of a catch up. What's been going on with me? Well, I left you at my results. Um, and Really, the final results are in. I've been on the supplements and crap for a month. All I can really say is that my guts are great. Um, and that I have seemed to shift, not completely to vegetarianism. I'm not going to label myself a vegetarian. I don't think there's a reason. There's, there's no need for it, certainly. But uh, basically, since I've been on these silly supplements, um, I just have not wanted meat. I still eat meat. I still eat tuna, fish, and chicken, and crap like that. But uh, I don't crave meat, and when I do eat it, I don't eat very much of it. And I have noticed a significant improvement in my in my guts. So overall, I want to call the experiment a success. I don't I don't know to what extent the stress zone and the female zone and all, pardon me, and all that has kind of kicked in. I am off my birth control pills now, so I am experiencing some difficulties with my hormones. But hopefully, I'm going to ride that out, and uh, that'll all that'll all catch up. I'll start making my own hormones again. But who knows? 
I'm not going through hardcore, hardcore hormone withdrawal. Um, and that would basically look like going through menopause. I don't feel that unstable, <laughs> although I might appear it at times. Um, so yeah, I'm optimistic, but you know, what are my other choices? Be pessimistic and want to die? That's, that's stupid. That's a waste of time. So, um, we're going to call the experiment a success since I'm having a good BM every day. And sometimes people, life is just that simple. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next topic. Uh, like I said, I've been going through a lot of stuff. Um, and the podcast that I call Boundaries, um, I alluded to something that happened at work. Uh, it's, it's still, I, I'm sorry there's going to be pauses because I am trying to filter. <laughs> and it's not a smooth transition as yet. Um, filtering is not my, uh, my normal mode of operation. So it does still take me some time. So bear with me. Um, anyway, basically everything that's been going on, I'm thankful for because it has really made me think about the situation I landed myself in. Um, the person that people think I am versus the person I want to be. And, uh, basically that is all shaped up to, uh, basically the, the series that I'm, that I'm going to unroll. Uh, called personality staples. Those characteristics that I want to imbue, take in, I swear to God, I'm the only... <laughs> this is what studying for the GRE will get you, an amazing vocabulary, but I still got a shit grade on the GRE verbal section. Anyway, yes, I actually use words like imbue when I speak to myself. Alas, I digress. <laughs> Um, there's four characteristics, uh, that I, that I really, I want to take in. Um, I knew during my first transformation that I felt like my lesson here in this life was to learn patience and humility. And, uh, I, I wrote the definition of patience on my blog and, and I'll, I'm going to re- that's going to be, that's going to be part of this. Um, but then I got thinking about it and it all has to do with control all of these personality staples that I want to take in and embody they're all about accepting lack of control in certain areas of my life and uh, as my disclaimer states I am an addict to control and I'm not going to get into why, but just look up personality traits of an adult child of alcoholics. And, uh, and that's probably the number one character trait you will see. They are control freaks. We, we are control freaks. I'm not blaming my parents. I'm just saying that my past set me up for, for these. And, and I probably have a natural inclination towards towards these things. I am a Leo. And yes, I believe in astrology, blah 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 and all that bullshit. Look, I believe if it's turned if it's seemed to be true throughout my life. So, yeah. I epitomize the personality traits of a Leo. Anyway, all the shit got me thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Who am I? What do I want to be? What characteristics do I have? What archetypes do I have? How do I want to rein them in and control them? right? Obviously, I'm a talker. This is how I process. I, I have to talk things out. You know, and the beauty of figuring out my process is that I just, I know myself now. I know that if I have emotions and I talk them out, then I can let it go. I've always known that. And that's why I had a hard time as a child, because no one ever wanted to listen, right? But here's what I, I realized uh, a while back. I don't know how many. Oh, it was a while ago. Um, my partner and I got into a bit of, ker- of a kerfuffle, if you will. And he said something that, that very much offended me. 
I mean, it really hurt, it really stung. But he was in a situation where he was under a lot of stress. And uh, he asked me, you know, for the next 24 hours, I need you to do what's best for me. I'd never been asked anything like that, to be honest. The, the, the fact that he asked me just kind of fucking floored me to begin with. I was like, far out. You mean I need to think of about you and only you for the next 24 hours? What about me? And, you know, I've, I've been kind of a selfish, uh, let's not use the C word, all right. I've been a selfish person uh, my whole life. And everything's about me, right? <laughs> everything's about me because me is what I can control. So the whole fact that, that he asked that, I was like, whoa, far out. Okay, well, I love you. So, yes, I will do that. But at the same time, I had these feelings like, no, you pissed me off. I want to get this off my chest, blah, blah, blah. So what I did was I came home and I recorded why I was mad at him and just kind of talked it out. Now, granted, I'm talking to my goddamn computer. I'm not talking to him. Lo and behold, by the end of the day, he got home from work. He knew he pissed me off a lot. But by the end of the day, I had had that discussion that I needed to have, and I was fine. And we had a beautiful 24 hours where I attended to everything that he needed me to attend to, and he had a great 24 hours, and he achieved some really great goals that he had set. And it was just a good time, and, and it was awesome because it showed me that, yes, you can do this. You can be selfless. You love this person. You can set your bullshit aside for him. And it's all because you know how to do it. I knew that if I talked it out, I'd feel better. The beauty of this really is, and this is why I record these stupid things, is I don't even fucking need the other half of the conversation to be there. I don't need to talk to someone. I just need to talk. Listen, people... This is why I say I don't need validation from, from, I'm not releasing these for validation. Who's going to validate it? I know the numbers, people. It shows up on my YouTube counter. No one listens to these things. I'm talking it out for me. I'm not talking it out for anybody else. Now, my hope is that I don't care if one person listens to this and says, wow, this bitch, she's got some squirrely ideas. I think I'm going to, you know, boy, I, Maybe I should try something like this or think about these things. Great. Awesome. That is also why I do it. But mostly I'm being selfish. Anyway, good stuff. So what are these personality traits, right? These personality traits are patience, humility, integrity, and serenity. All three, all four of these things, I can count, I swear to God. All four of these things require me to let go of control of certain aspects. And all four of these things directly to relate to four aspects or archetypes of my personality that when uh, they just go off the fucking rail sometime and they really create disturbances in my personal life, both at work and my, my home life, just in all areas of my life, because it makes me anxious. So, you know, basically these attributes are my inner child, who was abandoned as a child, both emotionally and physically. So my child has a very, uh, very deep-seated fear of abandonment. And I, and I, and I try to focus my patience on, on her, on her little girl, giving her patience, uh, just trying to give, give that attribute to her, to, to heal her and that, that fear of abandonment. Give it time. Give it, you know. Patience is all about I have no control over time. Right? Um, and I want to give her some, some patience and say, look, you have your whole life. Abandonment's not, it's not real. Because over the span of a lifetime, you're going to have a lot of different relationships. Just be patient. Humility, I need to give to my joker. <laughs> I have an inner joker that, man, she's got a fucked up sense of humor. And in situations that I will talk about, 
both directly relating to uh, what happened at my current work here and what happened in my work at Hospira, which I will read two blog articles called The Ordeal that explained what happened to me um, at my previous job. And they are strikingly similar. And this has all got me. (laughs) This is why I'm doing this. I'm like doing this again. Oh, you'll understand after I put up, quote, the ordeal and, and, uh, and kind of acquaint you with what happened in the past. Anyway, humility is all about giving up or accepting the fact that I have no control over how people judge me or po- how people form their opinion of me. That's humility. I'll go more into that. But I, give, I have to give that to my joker because my joker slips the rails and offends people quite a bit. Um, that's my, my lack of filters because my joker just goes crazy. So I need to administer some humility to my joker. Integrity. This whole thing has got me thinking about integrity. What does integrity mean to me? It means you do what you say you're going to do. And I need to give that to my warrior. I have a strong warrior archetype. I'm a worker. I'm determined. Uh, I'm, I'm very much a warrior. But that warrior a lot of times focuses on trying to, con, you know, she's just too strong. And, and they talk a lot, but, you know, you got to back up. That, that talk with action. And finally, serenity to my addict. My addict is probably my most prominent archetype. And to me, serenity is finding comfort in the fact that I don't have control, which it directly goes against my addict. So these are the personality staples that I want, right? Everything is practice. I must practice these traits because my addiction to control makes them difficult to act on. Okay, as humans, we tend to react, right? We don't act, we react. We do the same things over and over and over and over again because that's what we know as humans. Oh, when this happened, this is how I reacted. When that happened, this is how I reacted. Even if it wasn't the best thing to do, that's what we've always done in the past, so that's what we do again. I'm taking a turn. I'm going to try to practice these characteristics that aren't inherent to me. It takes work, conscious effort. For me to say, stop, whoa, what are you trying to control? And Maybe we don't do that. Maybe we do something different. Maybe we just give up or let go or just smile and walk away. (laughs) Shit, that is the hardest thing to do, but that is often the best thing to do. Smile, walk away. So I'm focusing on acting the way I want to act in line with these staples, but it takes conscious effort. Um, But it it really helps to, to catch them in real time. Um, you know, when I notice myself doing the same detrimental thing over and over and over again, just stop and say, whoa, what am I doing? You know, at the end of my life, I want to be someone I can be proud of. On the day that I die, I want to be able to look in a mirror and say, you know what, bitch? You tried your hardest. You've done some good. And you've left something behind that you can be proud of. You were a good person. That's what all this is about. Now, I, you know, my addiction is to control. A lot of that is anxiety. And, uh, you know, I had, during my first transformation, I learned to not take my thoughts so seriously. Um, go on my blog and read an article called Thoughtful Diffusion. You know, thoughts pop up, Right. And the ones that seem ludicrous don't have any power over us. Like, oh, I am the Easter Bunny today. No, we don't believe it. We don't believe it because we know we're not the damn Easter Bunny. But we have a thought saying like, oh, my partner's going to leave me for some asinine reason. Even though you you have as much evidence to prove that your partner's going to leave you as you do that you are the Easter Bunny, right? But one of them has power over us and the other one doesn't because we know it's false. Both of them are false. But one we know is false and one we think could be true, and that creates anxiety. Because it usually hits, for me, I'm using an example from my own life, right? Because it is my insecurity that um, people, the, the people I love will leave me. But I taught myself not to take my thoughts too seriously because it, they just don't have any power. 
Now I need to realize that the same thing applies to emotions. I've talked about it on my blog. I wear my emotions on my sleeve. A five-year-old could have a conversation with me and figure out every insecurity I've ever had and ever will have. When I'm happy, everyone around me is happy. When I'm miserable, everybody around me is miserable. I have a hard time controlling my emotions, and it's because it's all because of this addiction to control and my constant anxiety, and like it just projectile vomits out of me onto everybody. And I had an epiphany one day, uh, one day last week, I think, when I was really honing in on all this stuff and trying to process it, get it straight in my head. I had an epiphany that probably <laughs> would be common fucking sense to everybody else on this earth. But it was an epiphany to me. It, literally, I am 31 years old. This shit has never dawned on me. The epiphany was this. I do not have to act the way that I feel. <laughs> Far out. Now you're probably sitting there going, well, duh. You feel pissed, but put a smile on your face. You know, um, in AA, we call this fake it till you make it. And it actually works. If you, no matter how you feel, if you act a certain way, you will eventually fool yourself into feeling that way. Because emotions, we can actually choose our emotions. For people like me, it's very, very, very hard. And it takes practice. Again, it takes practice. No one's ever just good at something. You have to practice. So I focused really hard the last couple weeks at just, I see the way that I feel, but then I ask myself, well, how do I want to feel? And I just try to do that. I get a say in, in my emotions. A lot of the emotions I feel, I don't want. I don't want to feel shitty. I don't want to feel angry. I don't want to feel scared or alone or fat. Those emotions aren't real. So I've been trying to ask myself, in the moment, is this how you want to feel? And if it's not, just wait. Your feelings will change. Anyway, that's what I've been focused on. This is heavy stuff. I get it. Um, but but this, is, this is the direction I'm taking because this is the only hope I have <laughs> of putting on the big girl pants and trying to be the person that I want to be. These, these struggles aren't easy. The only difference between me and everybody else walking around is that I'm aware of how I feel. I'm aware of these things. You know, and I, and I talked about, um, and, and when I talk about the ordeal, uh, what happened to me at my previous work, which again is strikingly similar to what happened to me here, which was like, a, okay, summer happens once, might have been chalk it up to, oh, whoops, I made a mistake, happens twice, literally the same thing happens again in a different country. The same exact fucking thing. Obviously, I didn't fix something the first time. All right? Something needs to happen. I need to take stock and really figure this shit out. Um, so, yeah. That's what I'm doing. And, you know, just like I don't have to take my thoughts seriously, I'm saying I don't have to take my emotions seriously. I don't have to act the way that I feel. I wrote an article that, that links in with the ordeal. It'll be the second article. It's called Just Get to Confusion. And it's, it's kind of my, my thoughts on, on how you can try to change your emotions. How to turn negative emotions into positive emotions. And how just getting to confusion, which is a neutral emotion, can sometimes help. At least get yourself to neutral. You know, when we're talking on the negative positive spectrum, even if you can't get to the positive spectrum, just, just get to confused. And that's easy enough, isn't it? I spend half my life fucking confused. Confused about how I feel, confused about why I'm thinking the way that I do. But, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm processing this crap, and I think that it would be good for all people to do this. Well, just ask yourself, 
good Lord, I feel that way a lot. Why? Why do I feel that way? And why do I act that way in response? And is that what I want? Is that how I want to act? Real quick, I'll give an example. I'll give an example of practicing in real time. Christmas is coming up, people. My body's confused because it's summertime and there's Christmas trees everywhere. And uh, my brain says it's summertime, it should be your birthday soon. But Lord knows I can't afford another birthday this year because that would give me two a year and I just don't want to age that rapidly. Um, I caught myself. I was, I was on a lovely walk with my partner and we went to a store to look at Christmas trees to see if we might want a Christmas tree. He's not super into Christmas. Um, I've spent Christmas alone for probably the last, shit, four years since I was with my, my previous partner. Four or five years? Four years. Definitely, at least four years. I spent Christmas alone. And uh, I've always gotten a really tiny tree. And on Christmas, I've always just exercised and uh eating pancakes and washed them up as Christmas Carol. That is my favorite thing to do on Christmas. I'm super into Christmas decorations. Um, I love Christmas trees and lights. Uh, last year and the year before, I had a little tiny Christmas tree. And every morning, because I worked the night, I worked overnight shift, I, I would get home. And while it was still dark, I before I went to bed, I'd I'd stay awake and have a snack and watch some TV, and I'd plug in my Christmas tree. I'd come at, I'd come home and plug in my Christmas tree, and I would just watch it. God, it was so beautiful. I love Christmas. For me, I don't know. It just makes me happy. It's a day that I've always given myself to to do what I want to do what I love best. And yeah, for the last four years. Um, Hello, cuckoo. It wouldn't be a squirrel radio without that cuckoo clock, would it? Um, yeah. So this year, I'm, I'm kind of like, man, I decided that I couldn't afford a Christmas tree or Christmas decorations, and it wouldn't matter anyway, because I'm going to go down and meet my my mom's coming over for Christmas, um, but not until the day after. And since my partner isn't super into Christmas, I was like, you know, it's not really worth buying the decorations, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was feeling really shitty. I was feeling really pissy. And, uh, <laughs> I was worrying about it, you know, and my partner was sitting there talking about whatever, whatever the hell he was talking about, telling me some story about something. We were walking and why I wasn't even focused on what he was saying. Cause I was just spiraling. <laughs> this is it people. This was me in real time. I was spiraling. Like, oh, I could afford a Christmas tree if I really wanted it. But do I really want it? And he doesn't want it. He doesn't care about Christmas. And, oh, he doesn't care about Christmas. It's going to be a really shitty day. Probably not even going to do anything. I'm probably, you know, we're probably going to get a fight that day. And I'm like, I spiraled hard. Uh, th these, these are these compulsive thoughts of negative thoughts and feelings that I'm talking about. But in that moment, I was able, I, I just, I think I just looked over at my partner because he's the one that told me, just stop. When you notice this happening, just stop and breathe and think. So I looked over at him and he was still going on about his story. I still don't know what the hell he was talking about, but this was awesome because I did. I stopped and I just told myself, Summer, it ain't Christmas. Today's not Christmas. You're not having a shitty day today. Christmas is in the future, and you have no idea what that day will turn out to be like. And by thinking these things, by thinking, oh, it's going to be a horrible day, then guess what? It's going to be a horrible day. Yeah, because what we think is going to happen, happens. Whereas if I just choose to live in the present and not worry about Christmas... It could wind up being one of the best days of my life if I allow life to surprise me by not trying to control what happens on Christmas today. 
And there it was. There it was. I try to control the future now, and I end up manifesting negative situations. I can't control Christmas because it's not Christmas yet. If I just let life surprise me, then it could be good, it could be bad. It's probably not going to be. There's probably just going to be an average day. It'll be a good day because I'll spend it with my partner and we'll do whatever. It doesn't matter. I like, I, it's kind of the point of being a partner. I just like hanging out with him. He's goofy. He makes me laugh. And he's smart and he makes me think. Anyway, this isn't... Tr- I'm sorry. It's just turning out to be... Anyway, he... Yeah. This is my big realization. If I don't invoke these personality staples that allow me to accept that I don't have control, that I cannot control the future now, that I cannot control how other people think and feel and view me, I cannot control time, that I just, then you can't face reality, right? You're not dealing in reality if you cannot accept the fact that you don't have control. Me. Sorry, I don't mean to say you. If I cannot accept that I don't have control, then I'm not accepting reality. So that's a taste. (laughs) A taste of what is to come (laughs) with my mental meanderings. We're a half an hour in. Um, I want to try to keep these to a half an hour. So, uh, yeah, that's your ketchup. Ketchup. I miss ketchup. Wow, that was random. They have tomato sauce here. All right, Summer. (laughs) Oh, I think I have ADHD. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be good stuff. I'm glad I added the disclaimer. Um, and I'm, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I'm talking about these things. Because it's, it's worth talking about. For me, at least. So, uh, until next time, squirrel out. <laughs>